Um, uh, behind, right, behind me is the main entrance to the, uh, to the, uh, the School of Physics and Astronomy. Uh, and I'll hand over to Grace while I run up to the lecture theatre uh, talk a little bit more about things. So, uh, Grace, over to you. Hi everyone, sorry, I started sharing my screen and then didn't realise I hadn't unmuted myself. So hello everyone, uh, my name's Grace. Um, I'm an outreach officer here at the School of Physics and Astronomy and um, hopefully you can see my slide. So while Chris does a little speedy run up to the lecture theatre where he'll be taking the next section, I thought I'd just go through some housekeeping. So we've asked um, everyone to stay on mute for now, but please feel free to put your videos on um, because it's nice to see people's faces when you're talking. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, then you can do that throughout. And the best way to do that is to use the raise hand feature. So um, perhaps, I don't, I'm sure people know where this is already, but you, there's two options on the, on the screen there. And perhaps people could raise their hand now so I know you can use it. Um, I can have a look down there. Oh yeah, great, okay, Digby, you're raising your hand. Sam, thank you very much. Okay, great. And then once you've raised it, if you just put your hand down, Alex, Lucas, okay, great. Awesome. If anyone's having trouble finding that option, then um, then do, uh, you know, also use the chat. That's okay. Um, and yeah, you can ask questions in there. Um, what we're going to be doing um, with, this, with this session is a tour and we're gonna have a bit of a choose your own adventure style so we're going to be visiting lots of different people so um perhaps what we could do if i just stop sharing my screen we could then go um around all the different people that we're going to be visiting and everyone can just give you a little one line intro of who they are before we go and see them so um first on my list is where's my list um jasper in the year two lab do you want to say hi and I, uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm Jasper. I'm a, uh, a second year PhD student here in the in the School of Physics, uh, but I also did my undergrad here. So, um, and yeah, I'll be doing a, a lab session for you. Thanks, Jasper. Uh, next, I have Sam as well. Or, or Sam, are you is Sam with you, Jasper? Oh, okay. Love Sam. No. Um, Margot. Hi, uh, I'm Margot. Uh, I'm a second year undergrad student uh, at, and I'm doing medical physics path. Fab, thank you very much. Uh, next I have Charlotte. Yeah, hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm a third year undergraduate student um, and I'm currently sat in the library. Cool, thank you Charlotte. Um, next I have Karis. Hi, yeah, um, I'm Karis. I'm a fourth year master's student and I'm currently sitting in the JCR, which is the common area. Thank you, Karis. And then Ali. Hi, uh, I'm Ali. I'm a third year PhD student um, and I'm down in the gravitational wave lab in the basement of the physics building right now. Fantastic. So we've got people all over the department for you guys. Um, and we're going to be choosing where we go and see them. So Chris, it's probably better if I hand back to you. You've magically found yourself into the lecture theatre. Um, and yeah, I'll hand back to you. Thank you, uh, Grace. So uh, thank you to all the people who just introduced themselves to say where we are. So what's going to happen here is that we're, as, uh, as Grace may have said while I was running up the stairs, is we'll do a little bit of a, a polling to to see where people want to go first. So just as a reminder, we've got the teaching lab uh, where Jasper is. We've got the research lab where uh, Ali is. Uh, we've got the common room uh, where uh, Karis is. Uh, we've got uh, Charlotte in the library uh, and we've got Margot in the refectory, in the cafeteria. I think I've got all those locations and people right. Um, so those are the places. Um, have we uh, shared the, uh, we should share the poll um in the in the chat uh so people can go on there and uh and and share it there we go thank you so grace has put a, a link in the chat uh and there's on screen you can see a, a screen shared uh so you you can use your phone to scan that qr code if that's something you want to do or you can go to menti.com and type in those seven digits 78 53 45 7 uh you go to menti.com and type them in and it should take you to a uh, a voting uh, screen. Uh, so, uh, 
grace if um uh, yes I know. this is a yeah a, a bit of a juggling act of different screens so um uh uh juggling various uh, various things so type in the the codes that are in the chat or click on the link in the chat if you want to do it on the same uh, on the same device so you should see a screen that says department tour if when you're there you'll probably see a, a heart a thumbs up or a thumbs down button um, just so we know people are there, if you could hit one of those um, and we'll just see that people have, have logged on. If you're having any problems, uh, then you should be able to type into the chat um, that you're there. Uh, and I can see lots of thumbs up appearing. Uh, there we go. Uh, so that looks like most people have managed to um, manage to log on uh, to that, which is, uh, which is great. Um, so uh, I suggest we go with the first question uh so uh you should see if you can now vote uh, which flavor of physics uh, you're applying for you may have applied for more than one um so uh, i can't actually remember whether you can select more than one option on this um but you can always pick you i don't know pick your favorite or something um this is just to check people have got the um the ability to uh to vote and to check uh, we're all there as i said uh, let us know if you're having uh, any problems at all So 18 people, that's a, probably about what we're at. Um, we're not far off what we are in terms of uh, participants. So at least it gives, we know we've got a representative uh, poll. Um, so I can see there are 31 people in total, but about 10 of those are us as staff with various locations around the building. So um, uh, staff and students. Okay, that's a very pleasing graph we've got on screen there. Um, uh, so we've got a majority doing physics, that's what we see, then astrophysics, physics with astronomy, also looking fairly strong, and then a couple with medical physics. Uh, so great, a nice broad range of people applying for different degrees. Okay, so we said that this is all about where do you want to go? Uh, so uh, just as, a, well, we can go on to the next, um, uh, next slide, thank you. So where should we go first? Um, this is entirely up to you. So do you want to go to the library, the cafeteria, the common room, the teaching lab or the research lab? So do vote. Don't worry to go against the crowd if you want to do something different. I should emphasize we should be able to see all of these places. Um, so this is just a case of where we go first. Uh, I'll wait till we get to about 20 votes, I think was, uh, was about what we had. Although actually that might even be a moot point uh, at this point because <laughs> um, it looks like a uh, research lab uh, is uh, in the lead for the first place to go. So I think uh, that means that Ali, um, you're up. Uh, so it's just a few minutes in each location, just to give you a bit of a tour. Um, Ali, do you want to tell us a little bit about where you are, what you're doing uh, and so on? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, like, like Chris said, this is a research lab. Um, so it's the gravitational wave group that are set up in here. I'll do my best to give you guys a little bit of a pan of what it looks like. So this is the first room that we've got. It's our electronics room, something like that. And then we've got a few different experiments that are going on in here. Um, this is one that I'm involved in. So these electronics here, which look a little bit horrible right now, are being involved in um, a dark matter search, which is based out in Hamburg. So we're looking for um, a dark matter candidate particle called axions. Um, and so these electronics will be used to sort of control the lasers, which we'll use in the experiment, control the alignment of them. Um, we've also got another project hiding here, which is to control some mirrors, which we have in our other room here in Cardiff. Um, there's a few other experiments dotted around, but I'll show you the other room because it's quite exciting. Um, <clears throat> this is actually the first clean room that we're in right now. To get into the other one because it's a more clean clean room and he's put on some pretty nice shoe covers here and then this is our optics room so this is where we've got our lasers set up um let's see if i can get a better angle there so I'm assuming that we haven't really worked with lasers before, but this is one of our lasers set up over here. And we're gonna shine the laser all the way around through these optics. 
And we're building what's called an interferometer in this room. Um, this experiment is still pretty early on, obviously, but the plan is to build two co-located interferometers to test a, a theory called the holographic principle, which who knows, who knows if we'll find anything with it, but it's pretty exciting, pretty exciting stuff. Um, and maybe, maybe next year this one will be set up. Um, yeah, that's the main one going on in here. I don't, do we do questions? How is, this, how is this working? I should say, if there are questions from the audience, then please feel free to either use the raise hand button or to, um, to, to type something in the chat. Um, if you raise hand, we can always unmute you and you can, uh, or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. It's worth saying, as Alex said, this is, this is an early stages. The experimental lab down there in the gravity group is, is, is new. Uh, and so this is the, you know, the early phases of a lab being born, if you like, uh, to, to do experiments and growing all the time. So these are experiments that are using the same kind of technology that measure gravitational waves. The detectors that do that are much bigger. They're four kilometers in size and our basement isn't quite big enough to fit those in. Um, but as Ali said, they're using them for different types of things looking for dark matter chemistry. So it's, it's incredibly exciting research. And so, I mean, Ali, you're a, you're a PhD student uh, there. Um, and these are all the kinds of things, I know this year is a little bit different with, with undergrads and research projects, but it's the kind of thing that undergrads in principle can get involved in the later years uh, for, for projects and stuff. Yeah, that's right. I think um, some of the projects which the master's students were involved in were to do with sort of design, uh, looking at designs for these interferometers, probing the quantization of space time. Um, and then there are sort of other experiments related to gravitational waves. So I'm involved in reducing the electronic noise of photodetector readouts. Um, yeah, it's, it's all pretty cool stuff, honestly, down there. I think the other thing that's notable as well is that those, those electronics you showed um, you kind of think that in a research lab, there's going to be all sorts of fancy whizzy buttons and everything's going to be all polished chrome and everything like that. And it, and it's not, there are soldering irons involved, there are breadboards involved. It's not a million miles away from what people might've seen at, I don't know, GCSE and A-level electronics with slightly beefier components, but wires and plugging them together. Yeah, it's, it's the same, the same techniques that I learned in my first, second year of undergrad courses. Um, I started using, once I started the PhD here, and those are the same techniques which are then going to be implemented in these big experiments, um, you know, out at LIGO, out at ALT, these sort of dark matter and gravitational wave searches. It's all the same, it's all the same techniques that you're using for them. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. We should, we've got a few places to visit, so we're going to move on to other places uh, in the department. So thank you, Ali, um, for showing us that research lab. As I said, if there are any um, questions about anything, pop them in the chat, raise your hands, uh, feel free to, to ask. Um, now the next place uh, we're going to go is then one of the other four places. So um, there's the library cafeteria and common room with students in and there's the teaching lab where there's a little lab experiment going on uh, as well. So do vote for where we want to go next. Okay, I think that's looking relatively decisive. So uh, this is uh, a slightly more complex uh, uh, in environment that we're going to. Um, Jasper, are you set up and ready to go uh, for this? Yeah, all ready to go. Excellent. So Jasper's going to do a little bit of stuff uh, in the lab. It's worth saying Jasper's in our second year lab. Uh, we also have a first year lab and a third year lab. And actually in a few moments, uh, I'm going to don the mask and run through the building and be in the third year lab in a moment uh, as well. Uh, and uh, Jasper's going to do a little experiment there with um, uh, a few things uh, with one, one of our second year experiments. So Jasper, I'll hand over to you and I'll um, run down to the other lab. Cool. We'll see you in a bit. Uh, yeah, so um, like Chris said, my name's Jasper. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, one of the experiments uh, that we actually do uh, here in the second year lab. It's one of the experiments that uh, I think some of the, the students in the, in the call have even done. Um, and uh, But just to give you a little bit of context before we go on to the experiment, um, like I said earlier, I'm a second year PhD student um, in the condensed matter physics group. Um, but I also did my undergrad studies here. Uh, I did a, the, the straight physics, uh, physics course, um, and I'm now demonstrating here in the second year lab. So if you do have any questions throughout the day uh, about uh, life as an undergrad, about the labs, uh, or just about anything else, feel free to, to ask me. Um, now, I'm going to also quickly hop over to uh, our Menti page. Now, we are using uh, a different Menti uh, 
a, a different menti code for this lab just because we've got a few different bits going on so um, you can see the code at the top there there's a QR code as well on the screen at the moment uh, and I think it's going to be popped into the chat a link is going to go into the chat as well I hope uh, yep yeah, there we go uh, or is that the right one? Uh, if, uh, if I can Sorry, ask... One second, uh, Jasper. Cool. Yeah, so a link will be going into the chat in a second. Uh, and yeah, if you can just hit that, that heart button again uh, once you're in the chat and uh, I can see who's who's joining. Yeah, perfect. So we've got the, the new Menti, uh, Menti link in the chat there. Um, so I'm going to switch over to another camera now. Uh, we can have a look at the experiment. Uh, so this over here is one of our uh, X-ray fluorescent spectrometers. Uh, so we use this kind of kit to investigate the atomic makeup of different materials. Uh, and we do that by using uh, high, en high energy X-rays to excite electrons inside compounds to higher energy levels. When those electrons fall back down, they lose uh, those, the, those electrons lose energy. Uh, and they lose that energy in the form of secondary X-rays. We can look at those X-rays uh, and look at the energies of those X-rays to figure out uh, what material, what, what elements are inside the compounds we're looking at. Um, and there are, because we've done a lot of experiments in this um, uh, around the world, uh, we know kind of what energy levels we're looking at for different elements. So using that, we can find out what the composition is, but we can also find out uh, how much of those different elements are in the compounds we're looking at. So uh, let's have a little bit of a closer look at this kit. Uh, so this is the, this is the kit. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna turn it on and hopefully that will turn on. You can see it initializing there. Uh, I'm gonna keep the chat open. So if you do have any questions, Please do, uh, please do send send them into the chat, uh, and I will try to pick them up as as and when they come through. Uh, Grace, if you if you see any that I completely missed, please please shout at me and I'll I'll, I'll answer them. Um, so what have we got here? We've got two chambers. Uh, first of all, on the left, uh, we've got basically everything we need to generate those X-rays, um, and they get directed into this right chamber, which is our experimental chamber. So that's where we put our sample, and it's also where we uh, measure the fluorescing X-rays coming off of the sample. Uh, so first things first, we need a sample to go in there. Um, and we're going to use this. I'll put it on this camera so you can see a bit more clearly. Uh, this is just galvanized steel. Um, the reason we use this is because it's a reference sample. Um, and a lot of, in a lot of uh, spectroscopic work, uh, we use reference samples so that we can make sure that the kit is functioning correctly. We know what the spectra should look like for the sample, uh, and so we can put it in, make sure everything's working correctly, uh, and then we can go on to do some more interesting stuff. So, first things first, sample goes into the experimental chamber, onto the stage, uh, and we can just adjust, the, adjust it here, uh, move it to 45 degree angle, that just means that the X-rays are going to come in, uh, interact with the target, and be able to deflect nicely up into the uh, up into the the measuring device that we've got there. Um, okay, next thing is to set uh, our parameters for uh, our X-ray generation, and we can turn that on, and you should see that start to glow. Uh, yeah, that's coming up on the, the video nicely there. So actually what's going on in here is we are, the reason it's glowing like this is we're heating a filament up um, and that filament is getting incredibly, incredibly hot and is boiling electrons off the surface. Those electrons are getting then getting accelerated towards a metallic target. And when they interact with that target, they're generating lots and lots of X-rays, which are then being directed through a slit into this chamber, into our uh, sample, as I said earlier, then fluorescing and coming up into the um, into the, uh, the measurement device. So this is all basically set up now. So we're going to head back over to the software and have a look at taking some measurements. So hopefully this works. Perfect. Okay. First question for everyone. Um, we've got everything set up. We are basically ready to scan. Um, 
But first things first, we need to know how long we're actually going to scan for. So I'm going to head back over here. And if you can head over to your mentee, this is up to you now. Uh, how long should we run a measurement for? Uh, how long do you think is sensible? Um, obviously, this is a bit of a stab in the dark. You don't know the kit too well, but have a think about what might be sensible. So we've got uh, lots of answers coming in for 60 seconds, couple for 10, couple of 100, uh, oh, one for one second there. 60 seconds is looking pretty popular though. Uh, just gonna give it a couple more seconds, see if uh, any of them miraculously take 60 seconds over. Um, but it looks like we've got most of the answers in. Okay, so we're gonna go for 60 second scan. So let's head back over to our uh, measuring software. And as you can see, we've got 60 second measuring time in. You may have spotted this earlier and uh, that might have given you a bit of a clue. But uh, yeah, so we can just hit uh, the stopwatch here and we can see data starting to come in. Now, this is, uh, this is our spectra starting to appear. Um, and we're, we're seeing some peaks appear. Now, what does this uh, graph actually mean? Well, we've got uh, Energy, energy on the bottom axis here. So this is the energy of different. Uh, this is the energy of different X-rays are actually coming into uh, the measurement device. Uh, and then up on the Y-axis here, we've got counts. So what's actually going on is photon individual photons are being measured and counted. So the X-rays coming off of our sample are uh, going into this device. The device is looking at them looking at what energy the photon is, and then uh, popping it into a different bin, basically along the graph. Um, if you know what a histogram is, uh, that's what this, this plot is here. It's just counting different photons and looking at what energies they are. Okay, that's our scan done. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a couple of different features on here that we need to look at. Um, now, before we can do anything with this, uh, we, as I said earlier, we've got, we, we're using a reference sample. So we need to know what we're looking for. We need to know kind of what we're going to correlate these features to. So again, we're going to head back over to our poll. And the next question is uh, what we're actually looking for. So you should have kind of three boxes you can put answers in. Don't feel like you need to fill, put an answer in all of them. Uh, you can put one answer, two answers, three answers, but what actually makes up galvanized steel? What, what would we expect to see? Okay, we're getting some answers through now, so we can see iron and carbon. Uh, any other answers? Uh, zinc, oh, iron and carbon are very, very large now. Uh, zinc has also come up. Uh, we've got copper, potentially. Carbon and iron are definitely the big answers here. <laughs> And uh, did that anything? Nope, they're just changing shape at this point. <laughs> Give you a few more seconds to, to get your answers in. Okay, so it looks like we've got carbon, iron, zinc, and a couple of people think copper as well. Okay, well, I can, I can tell you the answer. Um, the, so galvanized steel is basically normal steel. So steel is made up of, uh, as two of the answers say there, iron and carbon. Um, but uh, the special thing about galvanized steel is it's coated with, uh, coated with zinc. Uh, and the reason it does, we do that is to give it some corrosion resistance. So we head back to the uh, CASI view, which is our measuring software. Uh, we can use this periodic table here and actually test some of the, uh, some of the elements. So if we have a look at iron, which is probably the most common, so we can see here that this peak here relates to iron. We've also got this little shoulder as well. We can imagine another peak being here, but because it's so close, we, it just kind of shows up as this shoulder. So we've got iron showing up and uh, we should also see zinc, which we do. We can see these two peaks here, which both refer to zinc. Um, now, one of the answers was carbon. Uh, the reason we don't see carbon here is basically because of the limitation of, of the kit. Um, the, this carbon has, does have an energy level associated with it, but it's not within the range of this kit. In fact, you can just about see a very small peak here. That actually refers to the carbon. 
um, but it's, uh, it's so small that you can't really see it. So that's it set up uh, and we've got that working. So uh, we can do something a little bit more interesting now. So let's head back to the poll. I'm going to go to the next question. So what would you like to look at next? We've got some options. Uh, I've got some um, kind of unknown alloys of different materials. Um, I've got some UK coins um, over here. Uh, and I've got some, also got some foreign coins of some different kind of designs. <laughs> Uh, it looks like you want to have a look at the UK coins. Cool. A couple of you want to have a look at the unknown alloys. No one wants to look at the interesting foreign coins. I promise you these are interesting. Okay. That seems pretty uh, definitively in the, uh, in the camp of the foreign coins, of the UK coins, sir. So, um, now I've just realized that I haven't got a poll to decide which coin we look at. So... If you can uh, type in the chat for me and tell me whether you want to look at the 1P, the 2P, the 5P, or the, the old pound coin, uh, and I will, uh, I will do that one. So uh, what, what would you like to look at? Let's have a look at the chat now. Um, I'm not sure I can actually pull the chat up at the moment, which is a bit strange. I can narrate it for you if you want. That would be great. Um, we've got... <laughs> Three people saying 5p, one person saying the old pound, mm -hmm. old pound coin, pound, 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 oh, pound. Oh, pound. <laughs> a old lot pound. of people went for pound. Early, <laughs> yeah, it was early doors for 5p, but I think unanimously it's the pound now. Pound coin, cool. Okay, so let's head back over to the experiment. Let's have a look at what we're doing here. So we need to, first of all, turn the x-rays off. I don't really want to stick my hand in the, in the uh, beam of, of x-rays. We can open this up. Take the old sample out, and this is the old pound coin, so we can pop this one in. Close the door again, and turn the x-rays back on. That click you're hearing is actually an interlock popping up here, um, and it stops me opening the door. So it's kind of a, a safety measure to make sure that I can't stick my hand in some x-rays. Um, okay, so let's head back to Cassie, which is our, again, our measuring software. Just going to get rid of the old data there. Uh, try and get rid of these lines, which we've got to double click on. There we go. Okay. So again, we can start a scan. We'll stick with 60 seconds. That seemed to work pretty well for us. Um, and we can see this coming in again. So uh, just a quick question. How much time have I got left, roughly? Uh, uh, just, just a few minutes. Cool. Uh, two two so, three minutes. You've got awesome. So, sounds good. So while we're waiting for the scan to come through, um, I'm going to head back to the polling software. Um, and I'm going to ask you a bit of an open-ended question to think about. So with uh, what, what do you think we might be able to use this kind of technique for in industry? So we're not talking about research necessarily. Uh, but thinking, you know, in, in kind of a, a more of a commercial setting or in, as I said, in industry, what kind of things do you think we might be able to use this technology for? Um, I'm going to leave this question open um, and we'll come back to it in a bit. Um, in fact, I'm going to hide the results for now. Um, and we'll come back to it after, uh, kind of at the end of the session um, and after we've looked at this sample. But have a think about what we what we might use this this kind of thing for again no correct answers just have a think about what you what you might be able to use it for um okay let's see how this scan is going on looks like we're pretty much done yep awesome okay so same again we're gonna this is this is kind of one of the things that we we do uh in research as well we you know we, we get these spectra through uh we're using known information but at the end of the day we get the spectra through and we're kind of presented with all of this new data. We need to figure out what it does. Um, and this is one of the good things about the second year lab. Um, it very much teaches you how to think kind of critically about your experiments. Um, it also teaches you how to analyze this kind of data. Um, it can look very daunting. We're doing a very kind of, um, uh, today we're doing quite a simple analysis. Um, but one of the things you do in the second year lab and uh, in some other modules as well, particularly computing, is learning how to analyze this data. So uh, 
Uh, one of the things you learn in computing is how to take this kind of uh, these uh, these spectra um, and be able to fit different functions to it. So it's something called curve fitting, it's something you learn in the uh, in the in the computer modules is how to take these these lines and take known models and try and use that to uh, kind of predict and fit to to this data. Um, but we can use this periodic table today. Um, so let's have a let's just have a flick through. So let's start over here. Um, so we're just going to flick through some of these elements. Doesn't look like we've got any iron. Cobalt is looking unlikely. Aha, so we've got our first kind of hit. Nickel is looking quite likely. Uh, and as you can see again, we've got this shoulder that we can see here. And this lines up quite nicely with this nickel peak. Looks like it's a secondary peak, but it's kind of enveloped by this larger one here. So let's carry on. Looks like we've definitely got some copper in here as well. Um, and again, you can see this main peak being copper. Not surprising, the old pound coin was made of brass. Um, and also looks like we might have some zinc in there as well. Um, but possibly not. <laughs> we, uh, you'd have to do further analysis to do that kind of thing. So we can kind of look at the, the, the makeup of it. Um, and uh, if I, if I, yesterday I did try and find some fake pound coins so that we could maybe compare the two. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I scoured the lab, uh, couldn't find any fake pound coins, unfortunately. So before we wrap up, let's go back over to the poll and see what kind of answers you've, you've come up with. We've got 12 people who have said things. Let's see what you've said. Cool. So we've got find the nature of unknown archaeological items. Yeah, fantastic. So um, looking at kind of, uh, yeah, looking at archaeology um, and looking at kind of, you know, maybe dating, looking at the, the type of substances uh, in the item, seeing if they're period uh, specific. Uh, forensics. Yeah, exactly. Really, really good answers. Um, again, forensics, rock analysis in mining. Um, see if um, so. There's one one answer that hasn't come up, and it's actually I don't know if any of you have ever uh, been to uh, like a jewelry shop and seen uh, either sold uh, like precious metals, sold gold, or, or seen other people do it. Um, but one of the things they use is actually a very very small version of this kit that's kind of in like a, a handheld gun kind of shape, uh, and it's used to detect uh, uh, forgeries. Um, or, or fa you know, fake fake metals. So you can point it at, say, uh, a gold item, see what character it is, but also see if it's, uh, for example, gold plated. Um, and it's also used for you know, finding forgeries in paintings. So, like we looked at the archaeological items, you can see if uh, an item is, if the paint is period specific, if it has certain like heavy metals or stuff in it. Uh, but yeah, some fant fantastic answers. Um, I think our time is just about up, so I'm going to hand you back over to Chris, who hopefully is over uh, next door in the third year lab. So, uh, yes. Chris, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. Yes, I've moved over to the third year lab. Actually, I think what we'll do is we'll come back here at the end, because I know we've got a little bit of a time limit on some of the other locations with, uh, with uh, where, where students can be. And I want to make sure you've seen a bit of lab. Let's see the other stuff uh, as well. So uh, thank you, Jasper, for that. The teaching lab uh, is, is a, a great example of, of some of the, the, the teaching we do, of course, and it gives you a chance of doing real physics, as Jasper hinted there. There's some stuff that's basically open-ended. You could test those unknown alloys. You could test those coins, find out what they're made of. You could go and bring something in from home uh, and within reason. Um, check it with the lab technician before you just go put random stuff in an X-ray uh, machine. Uh, test uh, what, you know, what things uh, are made of. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about the lab uh, a little bit now. So Grace has put in the chat again, the original Menti. Um, so if you go back there, it's the one that start, that's the code 78535, uh, seven. Um, so uh, where next? So we should have three places left to visit before we come back here uh, at the end. So Grace, if we can go to the next uh, question. So we've got the library, the cafeteria or the common room, just to hear from the students who are there, uh, what they want to see. Oh, 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 might get tight. Okay. So I think that looks like uh, last couple of votes in principle could swing it, but I think that we're probably there with common room. Um, so could I ask uh, 
common room. So I can't remember who's in the common room. Sorry, my uh, That's uh, me. mind has gone blank. It's Karis in the common Hi, room. Hi, Karis. Uh, if, uh, if we could spotlight Karis, and then Karis tells a little bit about where you are. Hi, yeah, so um, the room I'm in right now is sort of the common area. Um, it's where you'll spend probably a lot of time in between lectures when you've got a bit of, you know, a bit of downtime, a bit of free time and you don't have to do any work. Um, so I've used this room a lot in my, uh, in my four years at Cardiff. Um, obviously, it's looking a bit empty now because um, we're, in, we're in COVID, so there's not a lot, a lot of people in the, uh, in the buildings. But under normal circumstances, this is normally a really, really busy area. You know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of tables and chairs. There's sofas down the side. Um, for you to sit and you know either just eat your lunch if you've brought lunch in or you can do a bit of work if it's a bit less serious um, and it is a really really great area to just you know chill with people and you know use up your downtime between lectures um, there is a little you can see behind over here there's a grating there at the moment but when it's open there is a microwave and some vending machines and like a hot water tap um, so if you want to, you know, bring in lunch from home, you can heat up your lunch there or you can, you know, make teas or have something from the vending machine. Um, so it is a really, really great place to to just spend time and to uh, to do some work with people. Maybe if you're um, if you've got some work that's maybe a bit less serious or, you know, you want to be chatting. Um, this is a really, really chill area. You know, everyone, uh, everyone here has a great time. Thank you very much. Sorry, lost the mute, unmute button there for a second. Um, thank you, Karis. Uh, so the JCR, as Karis said, is, is where our students spend a lot of the time. It's normally pretty bustling in, in normal times with students working or eating or chatting uh, or whatever. Um, and the vending machines uh, are certainly, uh, I've certainly been known to frequent the vending machines when I'm on site uh, to get those cheeky snacks. Okay, so um, uh, uh, next location, I guess, uh, to, to go and carry on with our tour around the various bits of the building. So Grace, if we could throw up uh, the, um, the screen uh, with the Menti on and the next, uh, the next poll. Um, so back to it. So if you tell us where you want to go next. Uh, okay, it looks like we've got li so library and cafeteria, of course, the only two options left. Uh, okay, that looks fairly uh, uh, Yep, that looks very decisive. So I think we're due to go to the library. Uh, and uh, I th think, uh, right, we go to the library. Um, Charlotte, were you in the library? Yes, I am in the library. Excellent. Awesome, so um, currently I am sat in one of the computer rooms. Um, at the moment, obviously you have to book them, but normally you can just um, wonder in if you need a computer for anything. There's also printers. Um, so if you ever need to print anything off, you can do that. Um, what we also have is I'm going to explain everything here and then do a kind of quick run around um, the library because obviously I can't really talk out there. Um, but you have shelves of books. Um, there are mainly physics engineering ones in here. And um, you can order ones in if they're not in here just to come and collect. Um, at the moment, they're all blocked off, but normally you can just browse. Um, so that's really helpful when you come to trying to find references for projects and things like that. Um, we also have some kind of just study spaces that are just open and um, they get really busy during exams um, again at the moment they're all booked but um, normally you can go in there and then the final um, really cool thing that I love is they have like individual group study rooms so you can book a room um, and it has a table and chairs and everything but it also has a big tv and you can hook up your laptop or your phones and you can cast stuff up to it they give you all the cables and everything so if you've got a group presentation it's like a really um, easy way to practice it or just if you've got any course where you want to work in with a group that's kind of quieter than the JCR, but you're still allowed to talk, we have these um, little group rooms. So what I'll do now is I will just put my mask on, um, turn my camera around, and I'll kind of run you around the library. So as I said, currently, I'm in one of the computer rooms. Um, there is normally more computers than this. So we'll just have a look. So those are some of the bookshelves down there. This normally has extra seating in as well. So just a quick walk around. These are the study spaces we talked about. And then these are some of the rooms that you can book. So 
So yeah, that was a just a quick run around the library. Um, if you've got any questions about how stuff works, um, do say, but hopefully that will have been everything that you need. Yes, uh, thank you so much. So it's worth saying there was one library in the university, there were lots of others uh, around, around uh, well, well, so there's libraries that are open 24 7. Sorry, Chris, you're sounding quite robotic. I just wondered whether you had your phone on you that you could switch over to the audio from there. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay, is that any better? That's much better. Excellent. So, um, uh, we... Uh, there we go. Um, so, uh, the library is one library uh, that is there. Um, and there's uh, a, a number of others that are available 24-7. Uh, Let me just mute my computer so I don't hear myself twice. Um, uh, the libraries that are open 24-7, uh, other places in the university, uh, and uh, uh, Sean said you can get books sent there if they're not available. Uh, in the library, they get sent over to the library. Lots of uh, books are available online. You shouldn't have to go and buy books at all. You should be available in the library. You can't reserve a shallow way to get the books. Sorry, really Chris. Once again, I think your microphone is just by your collar. I'm really sorry. I don't know if other people are having the same issue. <laughs> is that any better? Is that better? Yeah, that is definitely better now. Sorry, Chris. Okay, that's okay. No worries. Um, uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, so you can get books sent, and all books should be available uh, from other places uh, around, uh, sorry, available online for people who want to, to book them. Okay, so I suggest we move to, uh, well, I don't think we have to do a poll because we know where we're going. Um, we're going now to the cafeteria. So, uh, Margot, are you in the cafeteria? Hi, yes, I am. Uh, yep, so hello, everyone. I'm in the cafeteria right now, or the refractory, uh, and I'll just switch my camera around and show you all. So this is what it looks like. Um, there's normally more tables and chairs than this, but you can just come sit down anywhere you like. Um, it's also a good place to study, but it is a lot more noisy than the common room, so it depends. I like background noise, not everyone does. Over there, we have the hot food area, uh, and over here, we have more cold food, cold drinks, and they've got a coffee bar as well, uh, which is really nice. And you can come here just in between, in between lectures. Uh, I came here quite a lot when I had only an hour gap in between lectures, and it wasn't worth going home. You can study in here if you like it, or you can go to the common room or the library. It's personal preference, really. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so uh, lots of, again, lots of other refectories uh, around cafeterias are, are around the campus. So if you don't live close to here, you can use it, but uh, it is available. It's also the refectory that is used for students who live in St. Genet or Gordon Hall, which are two of the accommodations that first year students are sometimes in. They're very close to the department. In fact, during weekday evenings, they can go and get their meals there uh, at the, um, uh, in that refectory, uh, to fend for themselves uh, in the, uh, yeah, on the weekend, but, uh, but it's there. Uh, for, for evening meals, you pay a little bit extra to get those provided uh, for you. Um, uh, you can, and I think, I, I tip, you can get a sort of a meal deal. So normally a typical meal is what, four or five pounds, isn't it, for a cooked meal? It's not, it's not horrendously uh, expensive. Um, uh, there's takeaway stuff as well, for, as, as, uh, as, as Margot said. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, we're now back in, let me put my phone down so you can... Uh, see me there. So uh, I'm in the, uh, the third year lab uh, and I wanted to show you one other, uh, one other thing uh, in here uh, before we go. So we're talking about quarter two. So we've got a little bit of time to, uh, uh, to play with. So I'm going to switch on the other video. Grace, if you could spotlight the, the year three lab video uh, as well, um, I think that would be, uh, that would be good. Um, and uh, let, me try, oh, let me change my uh, my video there. Why is that not? There we go. Um, are you able to do that, Grace? I can't. Uh... Yeah, I spotlighted both the Year Three Lab video you, oh, and your okay. phone. Is that Great. okay? Uh, so I'm looking at the wrong screen. I think that's that's all. There we go. Right. So you should be able to see in the Year Three Lab video um, 
a sample holder here. So I am going to um, don uh, very big safety gloves. It's always a good sign when there are safety gloves involved. Uh, and I'm going to don a uh, mask, uh, eye goggles. Let's see if those work. There we go. And come down here. And I have, I'll hold up the phone, you can see it. There we go. Uh, a steaming pot of, uh, right, do not drop phone in liquid nitrogen. Um, that is liquid nitrogen in there. Um, you can just about see the steam uh, or the, the nitrogen vapor uh, coming off. That's very cold. I'm not going to stick my, uh, my ungloved hand in there. Uh, so that's something like 97 Kelvin, right? So minus one nine, whatever it is, uh, uh, degrees, degrees C. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the other thing is I now have this sample here. Now this sample in here, uh, there's two little things in here. They're very, both quite small, but this webcam is hopefully picking them up. This thing here in the middle, this round disc, is something called, uh, it's a superconductor, it's called uh, uh, IBCO, yttrium barium copper oxide, I think, um, is, is what uh, IBCO is. So that's a, a, a ceramic, um, and it's a superconductor, which means it does uh, special things um, when it gets very cold. Uh, so I'm just going to pour this and try to get it on my feet. There we go, it goes over the desk a little bit. Uh, you can see the nitrogen bubbling off. Uh, I can hear it spattering on the floor. Um, so there's plenty of nitrogen in there. That is cooling down this superconductor, and that's changing it from uh, an, uh, a, a normal just ceramic material, an insulator, into the superconductor. Um, I'm also going to then, this thing here, this little uh, block, is a, a magnet. It's a tiny magnet, which is this cube. And one of the amazing things is, if I, this is probably cooled down. Now let's see if that's, uh, yeah, that's working. So I'm going to lift this superconductor out put it on the top so it's a bit easier to see. There we go. I'm going to put the magnet on the top. And there you go. You can probably see, if I lift the webcam down, you should be able to see that is uh, levitating. So that's superconducting levitation. So that magnet is currently hovering uh, above that bit of superconductor. Um, and one reason to think about this is something you understand. So in, the, in your teaching labs, what you will do is you will learn about uh, how to use these things safely. So how to use liquid nitrogen safely with all the health and safety, you know, the protective equipment and so on. Um, and you learn about what these things are. So that's just popped off. So it might be, the, it's, uh, it's warmed up. So it's not superconducting anymore. So I'll just pour it back in this little pot of liquid nitrogen there to, uh, to cool down again. Um, it does have to be very cold for, uh, uh, for this to work. This is one of the highest temperature superconductors we know. Um, it doesn't have to be horrendously cold. Most, a lot of superconductors need to be uh, just a few Kelvin. So, um, what's going on here? Uh, well, what, one of the properties of a superconductor is it essentially has zero resistance. And that means that if you try and pass a current through it, uh, or a voltage through it, then you end up needing infinite current because of, of zero, uh, zero resistance. Um, now, infinities tend to count as breaking the laws of physics. Um, there's also another property you might have heard of, which is um, magnetic induction. And magnetic induction means that if you pass a magnetic field through something, uh, you have a varying magnetic field, you can have, you induce a current. Uh, and what you'll end up with, if you've got in, infinities or zeros in resistance, and you try and generate a current, you'll end up with infinities somewhere. Physics is broken. Um, but instead of physics being broken, instead of ending up with infinite currents or infinite flows of electrons, what actually happens is that it says, well, in that case, I'm just not going to allow any magnetic fields. So if I manage to use these tongs, um, so this little magnet has got the, you know, the barred magnet fields coming out of it. So you might have seen the traditional sort of loops going top and bottom. And as they get down to where the superconductor is, they can't go through the superconductor and they push off against it. And they mean that the, this thing gets levitated up just by its own magnetic field, which isn't allowed into the superconductor, uh, lifting it above the surface. And it does warm up relatively uh, quickly. This is the same kind of thing that, uh, um, I'll pull that down again, uh, that uses in maglev trains. Uh, in uh, superconducting maglev trains in Japan, for example, uh, use this same, uh, same principle. There's one other thing uh, to, uh, to show you. Um, and uh, let me put this back on the, uh, on the holder. Is I have here um, one other factor, if I can put it on there without, uh, without breaking the camera, because Sam won't be impressed. Um, I, have here, uh, I have here an LED uh, on a stick. Um, this LED, ooh, let me pick it up properly. 
This LED, if you can see it on the camera, is orange in, in color, uh, or yellow in color. Uh, what is, uh, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna cool this down. Now, we, to, to, to learn about what's gonna change, we need to think about the, uh, um, the changes um, and what's gonna happen when I cool it down. So why is this LED uh, emitting light? Uh, this LED is emitting light because it's got electrons dropping up and down from what's called the conduction band into the valence band. So conducting in the material down to the valence band, this, this uh, the, sort of the natural states, the ground states, if you like, in those atoms. Uh, and if I cool it down, I'm going to change some of those energy gaps. So there's a pole that I think Grace has put in the Menti. Uh, so if you go back to the Menti, you should see on screen a vote for Something's going to change about this. So just to give you a hint, it's going to change in colour, or is it? Is it going to have no change? Is it going to get red or towards the red end? Is it going to get towards the blue end? Uh, have, a, uh, have a look, uh, have a vote online to see what, which, what's going to happen to the colour of this. So someone says higher energy, so bluer. Someone says lower energy, red or orange. Okay. This is where we do physics by democracy. I'm not sure the laws of physics quite work like that, but... Uh, I will show you the answer in a second. Okay, 12 people voted, 13. Oh, it's relatively even, actually. So we've got eight saying red or orange, five, six saying blue, green, so higher energy. Okay. Right. All right, let's see what happens. So this is currently, if we, if we go back to, if we stop screen sharing, we see the camera here. So if you can see this LED, it's that, uh, yellowy colour. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dunk it in. It probably doesn't show up. Let me move the camera a bit closer. Here we go. You see it bubbling? And that has gone yellow and into the green. Okay, so it's definitely changed colour. So LED has definitely gone green. I'm not changing anything with the wires. That is definitely just a normal bog standard LED. But it's now a green LED. Um, or yellowish green LED. Uh, now what's happened is that those, uh, when you've cooled it down, those conduction bands in the atoms, the energy, that ground state in the atom has got lower in energy uh, because the, uh, the, the whole thing has cooled down, lower temperatures mean lower energies. Those, uh, sorry, the valence bands have got lower. The conduction bands haven't moved at all. They've stayed at the same level. And so that energy gap that those uh, electrons are dropping down, they're emitting photons, that's got to a bigger energy gap. And that means the energy of the photons has got higher. Uh, and that's why it goes uh, slightly blue green. So I think uh, uh, good job we don't do physics by democracy, but those are the things, uh, things that you, uh, you, you pick up during, during the, the labs and why these happen. Um, and you get to use stuff. You don't quite do this experiment. You do things with looking at other materials in a more rigorous way than trying to hold cameras onto tripods uh, and so on as we go through. OK, so I think we're about there now in terms of the things we wanted to show you. Um, I've not seen any massive uh, question, any list of questions coming in, but do let us know if you've got any questions. I'll look at my phone because that's the one the audio is working on. Um, uh, do let us know if you've got any questions. Let me put down that camera before I drop it. Uh, and uh, if there's anything else that you think you want to see, then drop us an email. We haven't really got time uh, today to see much more at five minutes to, but if you've got any questions for any of our students, uh, uh, or, or for us uh, about teaching, then please feel free uh, to, uh, to ask, uh, ask now. Uh, other than that, I think we're about there. So I'll, I'll give it a few, uh, a few seconds to see if anything comes up in the chat, or if anyone wants to raise a hand, uh, they can ask a question. Can't see anything. Okay, so uh, feel free to type things in as they come along. We've got more things going on today. I know some of you were here for the, uh, the overview session uh, a second ago, but uh, we've got other things going on throughout uh, the day. We've got two things left uh, at about quarter past three, so in about 15 or 20 minutes time, we've got some example lectures. We've got one by uh, Phil Buckle uh, on quantum mechanics and one by Mattia Negrello on cosmology. So do stick around and watch them. Uh, while you, uh, after that, we've got a chance for you to start, chat to student ambassadors and members of academic staff uh, uh, about any questions you've got, any concerns you've got, and we can chat to you about what interests you about physics. It's always nice to speak to our applicants. Of course, one of the things we don't get with many of these virtual um, uh, attempts is the ability to, um, 
uh, chat to people one on one is, is harder to do. So we want to have that opportunity for those who want to stick around. So don't worry if you didn't register for either of those. They're on the same Zoom call. Do just stick around uh, for those. What we will probably do while uh, while we're waiting for those is to put you in a uh, a break. Uh, sorry, not in a, in a waiting room. And uh, just while we set up, we don't want you to see, as we were saying earlier, behind the curtain. We don't want you to see what's going on with all our, our, our preparations. Um, so uh, we'll just uh, sit those visitors in the waiting room. Uh, if you want to leave and come back, that's absolutely fine. If you're not coming to other things, also, I wish you well uh, and we'll see you. Uh, the other thing I was meant to mention for those who aren't in the things later or didn't see it earlier, we're going to have Easter schools from mid-March. So watch your emails, watch this space or not this space, watch your emails for uh, details of those uh, uh, of what's involved in those for offer holders to come and get a little bit of a, a more in-depth taste of uh, physics and astronomy here at Cardiff University. Okay, so we'll draw this to a close. My thanks to uh, Jasper, Ali, Margot, Karis, and Charlotte, and Grace for uh, running this uh, and uh, making everything work. I can see the lecture theatre light has gone off, so I've obviously been away from there for far too long. Um, uh, I will head back up there for the next session. Um, Thank you very much, and uh, we'll put you in the waiting room now. Thank you.